Australia, a nation built on the back of immigration. Almost every second person in Australia is an immigrant or the child of an immigrant. Twenty-one million people live here from nearly two hundred different countries, three times as many as fifty years ago. Australia bases its immigration controls on the needs of its business and society, operating a strict point system. Those who will contribute to the country are welcome. That is, anyone who brings an important qualification, has enjoyed a good education, speaks English, and is as young as possible. The hurdles are high. But those who are accepted are welcomed and will be well integrated. They may be accused of elitist selection or forward-looking controls, but the fact is that Australia offers immigrants a great lifestyle. Peter Tiesenhausen is an anaesthetist from Graz who came to Australia four years ago. Specialists like him are high on the list of sought-after professionals. Hello, Alice. Hello. Just thought I'd come by, pop by for a quick post-operative visit. Peter Tiesenhausen works in a small hospital in Noosa, Queensland. Anaesthetists are rare here, despite the good salary and working conditions. The lack of specialists is large, so the demand is enormous. The biggest difference to Austria is that there is a very great appreciation of the staff, not only the doctors, but also the sisters. There are no entrenched hierarchies like in Austria. Everyone here is worth the same. There isn't the same function of the chief doctor. Everything is about a group consensus. And so the responsibility of the individual is greater. One is not only appreciated by his colleagues, but also by the hospital management and the patient. With these ideal working conditions, Peter has decided to stay. Anyone who's been in the country for four years, including a year with a permanent residence permit, can easily become an Australian citizen. Their new citizenship is celebrated with a large naturalisation ceremony. These celebrations, organized by the Immigration Ministry, are carried out across the country several times a year. Big day today, thank you very well, Peter Tiesenhausen. Very exciting day. Yes, very exciting. Very great day. And uh, myself and two children. Peter's children, Anna and Thomas, also get Australian citizenship. So Anna, so Anna, look what I brought you. What have they given us for you? Eine Fahne. A flag. Another flag and a tattoo. And a tattoo. Oh. Where do you want to put the tattoo? On the cheek? So, or on the arm? That will never come off. Nearly 200 people are here on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland to become new Australians. Across the country, there are 13,000 immigrants from 143 countries becoming citizens. Australia welcomes you. This is a new nation. This is a nation of significant number of different people from all over the world. Now, Australian citizenship is a bond which unites us all. We are one. We are one, but we are many, is the unofficial anthem of Australia. Its message is that anyone from anywhere in the world can become an Australian. family name right for the next one, the Grichtis. The mayor calls everyone up to receive a certificate of citizenship. David Higginbottom, Janice Hill, Rex and Enid Hines, and Hillary and Lithgow and John Mackay. 
Please make your way forward. Peter, Anna and Thomas. Yeah. Peter's wife Monica is the only family member not taking citizenship. Wow. Hungarian by birth, she has already changed her citizenship once to become Austrian. Although Australia offers dual citizenship, Where she has chosen to remain from fully Austria. European. From Austria. From Austria. Did I get that right, Tiesenhausen? Yeah. yeah. Good. We had a bet actually that you were pronounced Tiesenhausen. Ah. But you got it right. And Valentina. Yeah. Thomas. Thomas. Valentina. Congratulations, Thomas. Well done, mate. Anna? Yes, Anna. Anna? Anna? Yeah. Yeah. Anna. Anna. Congratulations. Anna. Anna. Congratulations. Peter. Peter. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Well Thank, well Thank you very mate. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very best. Thank, Thank you. you. To acknowledge their new citizenship, they are given a cap in the national colours and an Australian tree, a symbol of the new citizens taking root in their new home. Welcome the Vandalin family from South Africa now. Yeah. From Australia. Australia now. And sporting. Yeah. Jerry Van Winkle. Yeah. So, my first so. Australian husband. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, a commitment to Australian values and laws. As an Australian citizen, I affirm my loyalty. I affirm my loyalty to Australia and its people. To Australia and its people. Again. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Oh, getting better. Thank you. <laughs> the fate of the native Australian is the darkest chapter in the history of immigration here and it has a lasting effect to this day. The fact that the Aboriginal people also welcome these new citizens has a particular resonance. There was a very emotional history told here today and I think it's a shame that it isn't done like this in Austria because here it gives the ceremony a special meaning. You got Austrian citizenship, how is that? I had to enter into the national government, was greeted by a lady in the room, a clerk, the paper was presented to me and I was wished all the best and that's it, goodbye. It had no emotional significance, not at all. Whereas if I think it would have been a similar ceremony to this one here today, so really a request to integrate into society rather than a welcome into the community, that would have caused very different feelings. This was pretty cool, I must say, the involvement of Aboriginal people I have found really great. <laughs> Naturalization ceremonies are traditionally celebrated in Australia with a festival. The Tiesenhausen family are enjoying it. Still, some attachment to their Austrian homeland remains, at least for the parents. We're still very often in Austria during the holiday season, and we'll go back there a lot. And perhaps when we retire, we'll go back to Austria. And what will you do? I'll stay here. Me too. It is estimated that by 2050, Australia's population will have grown from 21 to 35 million people. There may be plenty of space here, but this statistic has caused a lot of concern. Curbing immigration was a hot topic in recent elections, but seemed to be quickly forgotten again afterwards. According to surveys, the immigration of skilled workers from Europe doesn't worry many people. Public opinion is far more skeptical about refugees and asylum seekers. Ullah hey. Khan Ali is 18 years old. He comes from Afghanistan and has received asylum in Australia. He belongs to the Hazara ethnic group, which has been persecuted in his homeland. 
Ali lived in a refugee camp in Pakistan for seven years before his uncle managed to get him and his brother onto a boat. Me and me, with my brother, uh, with my uncle, we are sponsored from my uncle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, country, like, working with sheep, cattle, or study, study uh, six month, uh, months at Bremer Tefunala. Then I moved to work. Yeah, I started course here. <laughs> the people work is really nice people. Everybody helped me, like, everything, get a job, like this. So. My teacher. Ali has participated in training for farm workers, specifically aimed at refugees. In the agricultural industry, there is a big shortage of manpower. Equally, there is also a need to find jobs for all the neo Australians arriving here. So, how have the people of Warwick received this influx of refugees? Surprisingly, really, really well, because we're only a very, a fairly small town, and you would think that there could be some some problems where people might not be happy having um, refugees in the town but we found it to be the opposite everyone was really happy to help us out um, they helped out with um, the local show um, the local agricultural show they come along and helped us out with that and and people really appreciated that and wanted to know more about them and wanted to become involved so it was actually the opposite it was really really the community was very happy to have them here ali was lucky to get asylum as quickly as he did bella Don't go near Bella. Even if the controversial asylum policies of the previous Conservative government are over and the notorious Womera detention centre is closed, many refugees still wait years for a decision, even though the workers are urgently needed. The rural industry is, is, has a major skill shortage. We've had a lot of mining. Um, a lot of people go to the mines from farms just because of the 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 high wages in mining compared to that, so we've lost a lot of people over the years, so there's a definite shortage of workers for the rural industry. Agriculture is still an important factor in Australia's economy, but fewer and fewer Australians want to live the frugal life on a remote farm. For Ali, it is apparently just the trick. I enjoy most horse riding and you no know, tractor driving, yes. Uh, every everything is, was good. Yeah, so uh, I can find a job for anything I did here. I can find a job for me. I guess the big success was it was seeing how the boys grew in themselves over the time that they were here. They gained confidence. They learned more about Australia. Um, so that was probably the main outcome that they felt very welcome in Australia. And um, yeah, they learned some new skills and they had some skills that might get them a job at the end of it. David Stewart, nice to meet you. The fact that journalists from Europe are here in a remote part of Australia doing a report on immigration and refugees has not gone unnoticed by the local newspaper. A reporter wants to know why we are interested in this subject and what we think of Australia. Underneath the smiles, this topic clearly provokes some anxiety. The new citizens, the Tiesenhausen family, are spending the afternoon at the beach. Father Peter and the children are now both Austrians and Australians. In Australia, it is not only possible to have double citizenry, but actively encouraged. The idea is that it allows the immigrant to incorporate into Australian society and want to improve it without creating a conflict of loyalties. On the way to the home, the family spot a herd of kangaroos dozing on the edge of a sports ground in the shade of the trees. For the children, settling into their new home is still an adventure. With Australia's climate, the common language of English, 
and the steadily growing economy, the family soon abandoned their original plan to stay only two years. Normally they can't get nearly so close. Must be the heat. After two years we have fallen in love with Australia. The children loved the school and the language was no problem at all. My wife likes it, which is important to me. Happy wife, happy life. I like it too. Even in my profession I can express myself. We have a great working atmosphere, the best working conditions you could wish for. We are fine here, so we made the decision to stay here longer. But it is not always this easy. This German doctor and his family were denied a permanent residence permit because their youngest son suffers from Down syndrome. The reasoning was that it would cost the health system too much. This story is very tragic and should not have happened. The story has shocked the Australian population and reminded them that although their immigration policy is not bad, there are still a lot of mistakes and gaps. This was a big blow to the Australian community. It has not been at all well received and there has been a huge outcry. The public interest in this case was so great that the decision was finally revised. We have a visa. <laughs> Sydney, an attraction for tourists and immigrants from all over the world. With more than 4 million inhabitants, it is the biggest city in Australia and remarkably multicultural, with immigrants coming from all over the world, including Greece, Italy, Ireland, Korea, Vietnam, China and India. The largest Islamic community in Australia also lives here. Muslims from Lebanon, Palestine, Indonesia, Pakistan and Egypt are amongst the best integrated here. A Muslim youth forum is being held here. Since the attacks of September 11th and the Bali bombings, young Muslims have been at the centre of political debate. The riots in Sydney where young Anglo-Australians and Lebanese people clash may stand as an individual case, like the racist protests against the establishment of an Islamic school two years ago. Yet such cases have still led to young Muslims in Australia questioning their identity. Kuranda Sayed is the son of Turkish immigrants. He was a policeman in Sydney, has studied conflict studies and now works as a representative for the Muslim youth. Okay, so thank you, thank you. What does it mean to be Australian? For example, I got one easy going, would that be right? Australians are easy going? I agree with what you're saying about like respecting, like respecting the values and the morals of the actual country, wherever you are. Personally, I would say being Australian means not imposing on other people. Not imposing on other people, great, okay. I think that's fair enough. We can say what Australian culture is, what Indian culture is, but I don't think we can confuse what it means to be Australian because you're allowed to believe yourself to be Australian and not identify with a particular culture. I think they're distinct things. Uh, let's all give Safi and uh, my Sydney crew a big round of applause. <laughs> the meeting ends with a more light-hearted take on the topic. Okay, hello people, how are you all doing? You know the thing is, uh, we ethnics are always accused of uh, not integrating, but integrating is what we do best. I do my bit of integration by spreading Vegemite on Lebanese bread. <laughs> Egyptians are the craziest drivers on the planet. I am scared to drive an Egyptian, even if they're not behind the wheel. You do remember what happened to Princess Diana. You know, <laughs> you know how they have signs here that say, don't drink and drive? They need signs over there that simply say, don't drive.
We meet the comedian Ali Amro and his brother the next day at the harbor. They are the sons of Egyptian immigrants. Amro has studied politics and worked as a consultant for diplomatic missions. When I was raised, you know, you, you struggle to take on the, obviously, the identity, the, the predominant identity, etc. However, growing up, what would happen would be that um, my life would be subjected to international happenings. I came to the realization that it's, it's possible to have layers of identity. So my national civic identity is, is Australian. My ethnic um, identity is um, Egyptian slash Arab. My, my uh, religious identity is Muslim. Um, these don't mutually uh, contradict each other, uh, but mutually support each other. Amro Adele's brother was born in Australia. He earns his living as a dance teacher for breakdance and hip hop. Like a lot of Muslims these days, I, I see in back in my hometown, they like to show that they can implement like some of the Muslim qualities into Australian culture as well. And that allows other Australians to accept them for who they are. Because as an Australian citizen, even though I'm a Muslim, I still have to adapt to the Australian ways. And that's where you have to meet at a certain point together and agree to both terms that you will uh, be okay with what I believe in, I'll be okay with what you do. The majority of immigrants in Sydney come from India and China. They are young, motivated people with a good education who reach the necessary 120 points in the strict visa granting system. Engineers, IT experts, doctors, but also mechanics, plumbers and bakers. Even these professions are in demand here. The chances of obtaining a work visa can be checked online. Points are given for education, work experience, and knowledge of English. But if the age limit is exceeded, and if you have no profession and no relatives in Australia, then the result is clear and sobering. Not enough points. Until the mid-70s, the racist white Australian policy limited the influx of Africans and Asians to the country. Since it was abolished, Australia's immigration policy, at least on paper, is non-discriminatory. Far into the outback, the iron-rich red earth dominates the landscape, with temperatures reaching over 40 degrees Celsius. This town once thrived on its Cobar copper mine. The heyday of mining is long gone now though, and more than half the residents have moved away. For those willing to come here, there is a special region-bound work visa. Caroline Manyathi moved here with her family from South Africa. She is a nurse with special training for the care of elderly and terminally ill people. Now, exercises before school. Looking forward to those because no. I know you don't like those. And handwriting. Okay, yeah. The twins, Chenna and Tenna, are ten years old. They were five when they came here from Johannesburg. The flag of South Africa hangs in their room, so they do not forget their old country. So what do they like best about Australia? Um, meeting new friends every day and all the fun activities that happen at times. I'm going to school, seeing teachers, beautiful sm smiles and learning new things every day. That's the most thing I like.
when I go to school and um, yeah. And in your heart, do you feel more South African or more Australian? Okay. Uh, I don't know really. Um, it's a hard question. Um, maybe both. Okay, bye. 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 Have a nice day. Bye. Have fun. Have a nice day. Yeah. See you later. Okay. See you. Bye. bye. The girls are on their way to school. Their father, Noah, has just returned home from the night shift at the mine. Now he starts work on his sewing machine. He is a skilled tailor. Once you get the visa and you come in the country, everything was really easy. You have to get a job before you come in. That's the difficult part of it. So I think with us, it was yeah, we were lucky was my wife is a nurse. So they need a lot of nurses, short of nurses. Hi, oh, Miss Caroline. How are you? Good, in yourself? Oh, good. Integration is best achieved through the labor market. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Working in the nursing home, Caroline offers a service that is highly valued. So, One of her uh, favorite patients is an elderly watercolor painter. The next color you're going to use after that. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. That'll be good. Is it blue last? Blue. Or is it blue following colors. now? There's not many different colors. Okay, too. yeah. We never felt like outsiders. And the community out there, at large, were just so accepting and, you know, you meet strangers down the street and they're asking you, oh, where are you from and this and you know, why are you here? And you just felt so relaxed and, oh, this is, this is where I want to be. Yes. Mm. Caroline feels at home here. But the thought of someday returning to their old homeland hasn't disappeared. Probably for the next 10 years or so, we will probably still be around. But, you know, home is always home. So we will go home eventually one day. But we don't know whether the girls will, will come, you know, will go with us. But we, Noel and I will definitely go back home. An integrated citizen rejoices. If you have something to offer Australia, it certainly has a lot to offer you. Barbecue, ein Bier. Sonnenschein, Beach, was will man mehr? Thank you. All right, the steaks are ready. That's good. Okay, no, it's a big honor and a big pleasure for me to be Australian today, tonight. Yes. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.